the distinguished faculty, the chancellor, the provost, to the families and friends listening now, and to my fellow graduating class of 2020, I would first like to say thank you. It is with great honor that I speak to you on behalf of my fellow graduates. As I thought about what I might say to all of you today, I reflect on the four years it has taken me to complete my master's degree. I know some of you are wondering why it took me so long. Most of the graduates probably took three or four semesters tops to complete their graduate degrees, so why did it take me four years? To understand that, you have to understand who I am. So flash back to my undergraduate experience. It had always been my dream to earn my engineering degree, but it was financially difficult and I found myself at one point working two to three jobs at the same time, almost 100 hours a week, in order to work my way through college. My family was incredibly supportive but couldn't completely support me on this journey. So when I had to stop going to school to earn money for college later, that's what I did. But support doesn't always have to be monetary. I remember my mom saying, just take one class when you can afford it, but just don't quit. And my friends and coworkers never pressured me to go back to school or made fun of me, but instead nudged me to just take one class next semester, but just don't quit. And so in August of 2003, two weeks after my husband and I got married, Agreeing to forego a honeymoon just then, I went back to school to finish my engineering degree. Three years later in 2006, I earned my civil engineering degree from UAA. But in those three years, I still worked full-time as a full-time student. I managed to land the best engineering internship any student could have wished for in a small but well-established firm, Trick Nyman Hayes, TNH, whose owner, Ted Trueblood, was also a UAA alum along with a few of the other amazing engineers at the office. Working at TNH, I received the most positive support I could have ever imagined. My friends and coworkers wouldn't let me quit. They reminded me what I'd get when I got my degree, a cushy corner cubicle on the third floor next to the window and the water cooler, all the perks. Just finish this one semester, then one more and you're done. So why four years for my master's degree? Fast forward to 2016 when the opportunity to go back to school and realize another dream of mine, to earn a master's degree. By this time, I had a family. I was working full time, my volunteer work, PTA mom, soccer mom, and life were all around me, piled high and messy most times. Those were all my dreams realized right in front of me. But what about one more dream? Get that master's degree, that little voice in my head said. So with massive support from my family, a lot of takeout dinners and dirty dishes left piling while I finished my homework. I completed my master's degree one class at a time, one semester at a time. Slowly but surely, steadily and consistently moving on to the next class and checking that semester off. Until my last semester, four years later. But it didn't come without interesting challenges, like having a couple of my classes start at the same time elementary school lets out. My six-year-old, now 10-year-old son, has come to class with me so often, my professors know his favorite toy. Life gets full, but don't feel like you have to give up on your dreams because you think life is too busy or because of the choices you made years ago. That was yesterday. Make a new choice today. I brought my son to class with me mostly because of scheduling conflicts, and kids seem to be more flexible than class schedules. But I took it as an opportunity for him to see the inside of a college classroom while the class was actually in session. Most high school students haven't been to a college lecture as much as my 10 year old, and he doesn't think anything of it. All the better for me if I don't have to convince him to go to college when he's a teenager. Plant that seed early. I really thought I was the uncommon graduate, the atypical student with a family and full-time job. But as I learned more about my classmates, many also had families, juggling schedules, diapers, family time, and homework, just like me. And just like me, we are here at the end of our journey to re realize our dreams. Although this dream suddenly became a surreal adventure when we learned the coronavirus would put another challenge in front of us, the graduating class of 2020 that kind of almost didn't. This roller coaster of emotions through this semester has definitely made me appreciate simple things so much more, like a hug or a high five with those celebrating graduation with all of us. And in all of this, I hope everyone is safe and I thank you for making an effort to spend this moment with us. For everyone who gave us encouragement and support all along the way, thank you. To my fellow graduates, congratulations, air hugs and high fives. I'd also like to leave you with a personal challenge. 
as much as you received encouragement and positive support to get to this dream, take a little of that encouragement or a lot of it and share it with the next person you see who might need it to get to theirs. Kind of like re-gifting, only way better. Thank you.